Okay, good evening. Um, it is almost that time to get started here. Um, actually, it's 6 o'clock, and we're going to get started tonight. So tonight we are going to be talking about uh, asthma and chiropractic, and um, going to be doing reading off a lot of information tonight just to, just to give you some some data and some support in terms of help you understand what this is, you know, what this, uh, um, how asthma can impact your health. And then later we'll talk a little bit about how um, chiropractic care can be um, at least something to, to, to really consider um, as a way of helping your body respond better if you are um, having had some experience or still continue to have some experiences with, uh, with asthma. And I'm, I'm basically going to share with you that I, I have a personal story for my, you know, for me because I was asthmatic um, pretty much most of my growing years growing up until I was at uh, 19 when I was introduced to going to a chiropractor. So um, to start with, um, let me just share with you that how asthma is something that has been increasing on an ongoing basis. So I did some research today and I just wanted to kind of share with you some of these stats that I think will be very helpful to you. Um, so for example, here in the United States, um, one in 12 uh, people, and that's about 25 million people, have asthma. And what we see happening is that the numbers are increasing. I'll tell you how much they're increasing because I can go back, when we look at a study that was done back in, gosh, this was like in, in, in 1980, there were like 15 million Americans that were affected by, um, by asthma, and including 4 million of those were children. So we can see that just over the years how all this stuff has increased. Now these statistics here I think are from 2007. Um, so then we go at one in two people, and that's about 12 million people um, with asthma had an asthmatic attack in 2008 but many asthma attacks could have been prevented. So we'll, you know, we'll go into talking about that a little bit. And it's a tough thing because many times people don't know why or when it's gonna come on. Um, another interesting stat is that 56 billion, okay, you know, that is what it costs the US every year in medical costs, lost school and work days and early deaths in 2007, okay? Again, that's a, that's a huge number because now when we go back, and when I looked at this other study here, um, back in 2000, no, it was 1980, um, it, it talked about adults with asthma lose over 180 million in lost wages. Um, and in children, uh, it's over 1 billion by staying home from work. Um, you know, parents having to stay home from work to care for the children. So. We want you to understand that, that asthma is, is, is really a, a serious problem for many people, and, and I've known people who unfortunately have died from asthma, so it's not a, uh, something you want to take lightly. It's, it's really something that's serious and needs to be addressed, and so we want to look at a lot of the things that we can do to actually help the body function better, because if you're in chiropractic, that's what we talk about a lot, is function. How do we allow and get our bodies to function better, all right? Um, so for many people, asthma can be a lifelong disease that, you know, causes wheezing. I know when I was a young kid growing up, at first I didn't know what the heck it was. I remember going to, you know, my mother taking me to places to um, have different tests done to see if I was sensitive to certain things, um, you know, ragweed, pollen, all these other different things to see what would trigger my, my asthma. And, I, and as time went on, I really figured out what it was. Um, I did something really crazy one time. I remember in high school, I went to um, to, to work at this um, on this farm where they had bales of hay that they were pulling out to give to the, the horses. It was like an actual horse farm. And I'm thinking, hey man, this is going to be some you know good money. Um, man, <clears throat> when I got to the place, I mean it was a tractor trailer filled with stacks of hay, and I'm doing this thing, and I'm just going in taking this. This uh, uh, piece, uh, this tool to you know hook it, pick it up, and carry. And those things were heavy, but as I got midway into the uh, uh, to the tractor trailer, to the trailer portion where all the hay was, 
I can be I began to feel my chest starting to tighten up and I could feel myself wheezing and I'm telling you I I really feel that if I didn't get out of there it would, it would turn into a really bad situation so um, you, you talk about the wheezing chest tightness coughing um, I remember those times where I would actually be on the bed and just <sighs> sucking air in and it was just really really difficult it felt like having a, a an elephant sitting on your chest in terms of how you know that experience was so um and then for me you know obviously i took a lot of different medications growing up and um and i would have to say that they worked um temporarily and then when i was exposed to certain things so i knew like for me what things um impacted me so it was you know I, you know as a young kid i had to you know, contribute to helping to cut our grass. Um, when I was in high school playing football, I realized that if I was in an area that was very dusty and dry, that would trigger my asthma, certainly grass. That's why today, um, even though I, it was through chiropractic care that helped me overcome um, and allow my body to function better as a result of, you know, doing that, I've, I've also learned that there are certain things I can't do. I can't be around. So I don't cut grass. I mean, I've tried it. Um, I've even tried it with putting mask on. It's just that there's something about those grass particles and when that stuff gets into the environment, in the air, um, it can have an impact on me. So I, I, I avoid doing that and, um, and, and it has made a big difference for me and my health. And I think the key is this, is understanding is once you understand um, what are your triggers, you learn to stay away from them. Okay. Um, so so it, it can be a lifelong disease, as I mentioned, okay? Um, it can limit a person's quality of life. Like for example, there are some people that um, can't do sports. I mean, they will actually, um, the asthma will be in, induced by doing a, a sporting activity, okay? So it's good for them to know that. And in many cases, you know, we see here that, according to the statistics I read today, that they don't even know why asthma rates are rising. Um, I have a sense myself, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm kind of like maybe a little crazy about this, but I really believe that if we think about how things can impact the human body, um, we know that there's over 80,000 chemicals in our environment that, that, that our bodies come in contact with every day. The, you know, uh, toxins in our waters, toxins in our foods. Um, so in knowing that, I believe that those are some of the reasons why that I, I feel that the asthma thing is going is on a rise okay so I mean you just have to look at it I mean just look around us and see what we're doing today um, in terms of all the chemicals they put in foods my brother was telling me something interesting like today he went to a birthday party and uh, they had some uh, cake he had a slice of cake and he went to take a little bit of this uh, icing off the cake that was had, it was red, and he just kind of took it off his finger and licked his finger, and he still hasn't been able to get the red dye off his finger yet. So I don't know. I, I, I may be a little bit over the top on this, but I think that there's got to be something in there with if that, can't, you know, he can't get that off his fingers. There could be some toxic stuff going into your, your body. Um, just a thought. Um, um, we Look, I can tell you this. that I remember when we were growing up, too, when my mom would be cleaning the house, and if she used bleach or Clorox, that was another thing that triggered uh, my asthmatic attacks. So just think about the number of children today that you know that are living in an environment that, um, as a matter of fact, if you look at the labels of bleach, Clorox, and any of those cleaning products, they typically have one that's like, they, they'll say like, don't use this in an enclosed environment and make sure that the environment that you're in is, it has a lot of air flowing in and out. So a window open, you know, fan blowing or whatever. But think about it. How many of you, you know, if you have a shower or a shower stall and you go in there to clean it, well, you're enclosed and there's no way you're going to get any air in there. And uh, you, you can imagine just washing, cleaning that environment out. And then those chemicals, those gases or whatever that's in, in those products, they linger throughout the bathroom and they can also linger throughout the entire house. So if you're in that environment, it could create um, a situation where you can trigger an asthmatic attack. Okay. So it's, it's really important, especially for parents with young children, well, I, I say for anybody, but especially if you have children and, and you notice that they're having some bronchial breathing difficulties you might want to take into account, 
um, that this could be triggering it. And if so, then you want to start thinking about going out and getting um, some green products. Um, I know for me and my family, we use uh, products from a company called Melaluga. That's what I use for my stuff in my office and things in my house because they are they're green products and they're safe and effective, okay? So something to think about. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Um, the number of people diagnosed with asthma grew by 4.3 million from 2001 to 2009. From 2001 through 2009, asthma rates rose the most among black children. Okay, almost a 50% increase. Asthma was linked to 3,447 deaths. That's about nine per day in 2007. And asthma costs in the United States grew uh, from about 53 billion in 2002 to about 56 billion in 2007. That's about a 6% increase. Um, and then it goes on to talk about here, greater access to medical care is needed for the growing number of people with asthma. And I think about right now, man, can you imagine, given the environment in which we all live in now, um, how difficult it is to get an appointment to see a doctor um, or anything? I mean, you could, look, I've been trying to get in touch with somebody to take care of um, a, a pipe on my pool um, um, or I've been trying to get someone to come to take a look at my shit and I can't find any or someone to come and take a look at my my gas range I mean you can't it's, it's the weirdest thing so can you imagine if you have a health condition like asthma and you can't find someone some doctor somewhere that would uh, uh, you know be available to address that, that that concern okay so we know that asthma is increasing every year uh, in the United States um, we know that um, the number of people with asthma continues to grow. And as we said before, one in 12 people, about 25 million or 8% of the population had asthma in 2009, compared with one in 14, about 20 million or 7% in 2001. So this increase is happening. More than half, okay, that's 50%, 53% of people with asthma had an asthmatic attack in 2008. More children, that's 57%, than adults, 51%, had an attack. Okay, 185 children and 3,262 adults died from asthma in 2007. So you can see it's a, it's a, it's a problem, okay? It's, it's, a, it's a big problem. Um, about 1 in 10 children, it's 10%, had asthma, and 1 in 2 adults, or 8%, had asthma in 2009. Women are more likely than men, and boys are more likely than girls to have asthma. So, again, um, about one in nine, that's about 11%, non-Hispanic blacks of all ages, and about one in six, or 70% of, of non-Hispanic black children had asthma in 2009, the highest rate among racial uh, ethnic groups. Uh, the greatest rise in asthma was among black children, and that's almost 50% increase from 2001 through 2009. So that's that's an important thing to understand, especially of those of you out there African American, that you know if you have children who are dealing with asthma, I my thing is that we got to start thinking about what are we doing, what what are things that we're doing deliberately that could be creating and causing your immune system um, or your nervous systems not being able to. Uh, adapt to whatever the environment presents uh, to it, to the body. So, um, you know, I had an interesting uh, situation one time in my office where a young lady came in early in the morning. She had a young child, child was maybe about three years old, walking. And I'm talking about nine o'clock in the morning. And this young kid, she gave him a, um, a Hershey candy bar. And I'm like, and I, and I just had to ask the patient, you know, why would you give that to your child? And her answer was, well, you don't know my child. And I said, wow. So my, I was thinking about who does the shopping <laughs> or who's the parent. But to me, that's, you know, I, I just don't see how you would want to give your child that kind of uh, uh, stuff early in the morning, first thing in the morning. I just think it's not a good thing. And you have, again, you have no idea how that stuff is going to respond, you know, react to that child growing up, okay? So... Um, 
You know, I wanted to share with you today also that today is uh, my wife and I will be, are celebrating our 36th anniversary. We've been married for 36 years, and uh, so I'm really grateful and uh, very happy about that. And uh, so it's a shout out to my wife to let her know how much I really love and appreciate her for being such a great human being, uh, wife, mother, uh, caregiver, just such a unbelievable human being that I feel so blessed by God to have her in my life, okay? Um, so happy anniversary. Um, so there are basically three types of asthma action plan stages. And I'll go over this with you. So there's just, just some information here. So one is uh, the green zone, and that's where you're doing well. There's no coughing, no wheezing, uh, no chest tightness or shortness of breath. You can do all your usual activities, and you know, typically you may be taking some prescribed long-term uh, controlled medicines such as an you know, inhaled a corticosteroid. And I gotta tell you, when I was coming, coming along, um, I took steroids, but you know, my problem was when I was 19, I took it, and this is where it's important to understand that as we age, what you're taking at 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, whatever, your body is changing. So while your body's changing, your body's ability to respond to that may change. So I can tell you that when I was younger, I was taking medications, they, they worked and then they didn't work. What I mean by that, they worked temporarily. Then I was in the, if I was in the environment where I could have those sensitive um, things impact me, then they, you know, they didn't work. But one of the things that happened for me was when I was 19, I took a steroid for the asthma and I had a severe reaction that made me feel like my heart was gonna just explode through my chest. That was the last time I took medication for asthma because that's when I got introduced to going to a chiropractor. And uh, shout out to Marty Brown who uh, helped me learn and understand how the body works and why and how chiropractic was so important to help me uh, through getting adjusted on a regular ongoing basis had allowed my system to respond in such a way that my asthmatic symptoms no longer impacted me, okay? Um, the yellow zone is uh, when things are getting worse, when you start coughing, you wheeze, chest tightness, shortness of breath, uh, waking at night um, can do some, but not all usual activities, and you, you use medication to relieve it. And I, I remember those days for me. I can I kid you not, I can remember there were times I would be lying in bed, and I swear I could not, I just couldn't breathe. I was just like heaving, like sucking air, and it was hard to get the air into my lungs. And I remember those days, and it wasn't fun. So anyone out there who, who, who suffers from that, I, I you know, I... I, I empathize with you. And the red zone is medical alert. Um, this is where people will have very short, they're very short of breath, um, and the quick relief medicines don't, that don't help. Um, they cannot do their usual activities, symptoms no better after 24 hours, then you know you got a problem going on, okay? So just understand, you know, that these are some serious, uh, it's a serious problem that needs to be addressed and so one of the things I want to talk about now is to go over and look at and help you understand, you know, number one, the conventional treatment. Obviously, the conventional treatment would be, you know, the inhalers. Um, they will, in most cases, give a person, you know, temporary relief. It's real bad. Sometimes it, it may not help them, okay? Um, but that's typical of what people have to do um, is they're basically going to take some uh, conventional treatments, Again, as I said, that includes uh, bronchial, bronchial dilators, steroids, and some type of allergy desensitization shots. Okay, I remember getting the shots, um, you know, uh, taking steroids, um, all that stuff. And what they did basically was to ease the symptoms of the asthma. And, um, you know, that, that's what we did. Okay. Um, so, Let's take a look at because uh, one of the things I want to you know kind of look at here is uh, a study that was done um, back in Canada. This was well, this was in the New York Times magazine, but it says here two recent studies conducted in Canada and New Zealand suggest that asthma patients who rely on inhaled beta dilators 
run twice the risk of dying um, by opening airways that are normally constricted in an asthmatic attack. Bronchodilators might actually expose the lungs to more of the substances that damage them, hurting the asthmatic individual down, you know, down a dangerous um, uh, spiral. So, look, this is true probably of any medication out there. The thing that you use to help you on the long end can actually cause that particular problem to to present itself. Okay, you know, let's think about people like. Uh, uh, athletes like Al Izato who was on steroids to get big and muscular and only to, um, as he continued using them later on, he kind of like shriveled up, okay? So just the, you know, you take this drug to uh, to make you big and muscular and then all of a sudden you keep doing it, then the body kind of reverses itself and then you wind up having some serious problems as a result of that. Um, now, just understand that I, I'm, I, Big advocate. I think that when I think about medicine, and especially here in the United States, um, when it comes to emergency situations, I, I don't think you want to be anywhere else that I know of, other than the United States. Okay, to to take care of a serious uh, problem. Um, but I also think that's important that we understand how the human body works. Okay, so one of the things that I like to talk about, and I'm going to be talking really fast here. But I want you to understand about the nervous system. So if we look behind us, you'll see a, uh, an autonomic nervous system chart. Can't see it over here, but I have a chart over here called the spinal nerve distribution chart. And basically what I want you to understand is that it's important to understand that a properly functioning nervous system should be the first priority in solving asthma since it is the nerve system which controls all our bodily functions. To me, that's an important thing. I had a discussion about that with a patient. Does that mean you should not go to a medical doctor? No, go to your medical doctor. But at the same time, you wanna make sure that you're under chiropractic care to get your spinal system uh, properly aligned so that your body can function the way that it was designed and programmed to. The nerve system works by sending and receiving messages or impulses to all parts of the body. I mean, you know, once we understand that, and unfortunately we're not taught that, so therefore you don't know it, and therefore you just go along doing whatever you're told to do in these other situations. Remember that breathing is controlled by the centers in the brain, the main one being the respiratory center, which is found in the medulla oblongata, which is at the base of the skull here, on the, on the brain, okay? From here, the nerves are gonna flow out, just, you know, I have this little, my little friend here, Okay, so this is just a model of a spine. We got the brain sitting up here. The medulla oblongata will be at the base down in this area. Um, you got the spinal cord sitting inside of the canal. Okay, there's a hole all the way through the base of the uh, center of each of the vertebra. And on the sides of the vertebra, you have nerves. These nerves are coming out and they're going to all parts of the body. If we look at the spine from the back, we have these things called spinous processes. Well, in order for your system to work properly, you want to make sure that these vertebrae are properly lined up. I mean, that's like, it makes sense. And when you look at this and understand how your body works, it makes all the sense in the world. So chiropractors, what we do is palpate, some we take x-rays, and we check to see which of these vertebrae are in proper alignment, okay? So we want to make sure that they are in proper alignment so that all these systems in your body will be able to fire, send and receive messages the way they're supposed to. So it's important to understand this. So as I said, um, these nerve impulses are sent to the respiratory muscles, causing them to expand or contract, okay? The nerve impulses also control the tone of the bronchial tubes. Uh, the sympathetic uh, system opens or dilates the bronchial tubes, and the parasympathetics close or constrict them. All right, so it's important that the nervous system plays an important role in both the control and activity of the immune system. The sheer power of the brain to affect the body as a whole and the general state of health is amazing. So again, if we, I mean, just think of it like just something as simple as a sperm and egg coming together, man. I mean, just like, that is just such a miraculous process that occurs and through the process of, you know, two cells c coming together, uh, you know, they becomes four, becomes eight, six, and it just keeps the cell division, and then all of a sudden, different parts of the anatomy starts to develop. Um, 
and everything just works according to a design and a plan. Um, and understand that your, your nerve system is protected by the spine. And as I mentioned here, consists of <coughs> excuse me, 24 movable vertebra. And when the spine is in proper position, it protects the nerve path, pathways. But when the vertebra becomes misaligned, this in chiropractic, we call this a subluxation, okay? Because it interferes with the nerve impulse, okay? Which reduces the overall function of the nerve system and a particular organ to which it is assigned, all right? So again, if we kind of see that chart in the back, do we see the brain is sending signals down a cord and it goes to all the organ cells and tissue of the body? That's what's occurring for us on an ongoing basis without you and I knowing anything about how this whole system is working. So we have to understand this is a, a, something that we, can't, we found with this Dr. Neville T. Usher. He said that physiopathic changes in the spinal structure actually produce an inhibition of nerve impulses, okay? Subjective and clinical findings associated with this syndrome include severe asthma attacks and bronchial asthma. So what is that saying? It's saying that whenever in certain parts of the spine, if a vertebra shifts out of alignment, what he's saying here is that that misalignment could literally cause that system to malfunction in such a way that it could actually produce an asthmatic attack. Okay, I don't know about you, but that to me makes a lot of sense. All right, now that doesn't say to you or anyone else um, that we as, or myself, or as any chiropractor is saying to you that chiropractor cures asthma or any other condition out there. No, we're not saying that. What I'm saying is that when your spine is out of alignment, okay, if it's out of alignment, that it can cause a malfunction to occur that it could literally produce, you know, an asthmatic attack or it could produce any other type of attack. I mean, for example, I have patients who come to me who've been suffering from migraine headaches, headaches, uh, stomach issues, um, um, all kinds of those types of problems. And we're not saying that we cure headaches or cure menstrual problems or cure any of that. Digestive issues, no. What we're saying is that when we find that there's a subluxation in areas that impact that particular organ where that nerve is going to, it could, it could, and it may cause that symptom to flare up, okay? Just like when we look at the, you know, we look at the vagus nerve, you know, the vagus nerve travels from the base of the skull, the nerve endings go down to the heart, the lungs, the stomach, the, the kidney, uh, the liver, gallbladder, the pancreas, adrenal glands, small and large intestines. So, you know, it's interesting, you know, a person could have problems with any of those areas. And um, again, not knocking medicine in any way at all. But many times what happens when people have those particular problems, what do they do? They'll go and they'll start uh, taking several rounds of some, you know, type of medication. And unfortunately, not all the time, but many times you'll see it many times that people will start having side effects from those different types of medications that they're taking. Okay? Now, just understand this, that and when we talk about chiropractic, chiropractic, the science of chiropractic is founded on the premise that a proper nerve supply is essential in controlling and regulating bodily function. Now, if you understand that, I don't care who you are, I don't care if you are the smartest guy on the planet or a guy that just doesn't have any education on, but if you understand that, that the science of chiropractic is founded on the premise that a proper supply, nerve supply, is, a, is essential in controlling and regulating body functions, then what does that tell you? It tells me that every human being on the planet could benefit from being under chiropractic care, okay? If we just understand that, okay? Um, we know that doctors of chiropractic detect and correct vertebral subluxations by physically adjusting the spine um, and uh, we talk about physically. We sometimes now we can use instrumentation to, to perform that adjustment. Um, we use our hands. This restores the nerve system to an optimal level of function, which maximizes the body's inherent healing ability. And I, I got to get you guys to understand out there that your body has a natural innate ability to heal itself. It's the way God created it. 
Okay, some of you might like to use the word I use the word God, but I'm just telling you like how I see it is that your body has the innate ability to heal itself. Okay, um, what we have to do is find out where those interferences are, um, make the proper adjustment, and do it consistent enough so the body has the time to go through a process of healing. And then once that process has occurred, then we have to make sure we keep your spine properly lined on a maintenance basis for the rest of your life. That's what I do for myself. I do it for my wife and my children. Okay, um, my mom and my pop have all my siblings who live in the area here. They all come to my office to get adjusted. Why? Because it makes sense for them to do that. So I want you to understand this. It's very important. I don't, nor have any chiropractors have never claimed that they can cure asthma or other related conditions and not all cases of asthma are caused by spinal stress. You understand that. But scientific research has demonstrated that correcting subluxations does restore and improve respiratory and immune function which improves conditions like asthma. Okay? And it's important that you understand that. So if you as an adult, if you have children, your relatives, parents, I don't care who they are, and especially those guys out there who are athletes, it makes all the sense in the world to me that you would want to consider, seriously consider, being under chiropractic care. Okay? So I, I want to wrap this up tonight by letting you know out there that if you are suffering, or if you know someone who's suffering from asthma or in any health condition, it doesn't matter. Remember what I said, that by bringing about proper spinal alignment is going to improve function and it's going to improve um, your body's immune system to really be more robust and therefore over time it would allow your body to heal in such a way that you would like it to heal. Okay, So I, I hope and pray to God that you enjoyed this uh, talk tonight. Um, big favor that I would like for you to do is like the page. I would like you also to share this with as many friends as you have out there. And uh, again, you know, for those of you who are interested in coming in, I can be reached at my office at 609-383-9121. If you'd like to schedule an appointment, give us a call at that number. We're located at 22 South Main Street here in Pleasantville. And we really wish you have a blessed, human, uh, blessed night tonight. And I'm on my way to pick up my wife to go out for our uh, anniversary dinner, okay? Have a blessed evening. I'll see you back here again in two weeks. All right? Bye-bye now.